So in this class, we learn mostly about XHTML, uh, HTML, um, so how to make web pages, and those are the languages that we use to make those web pages. But first we have to talk a little bit about the internet, and just a little background about the web, where it came from. Um, so that's what we'll talk about in, in this discussion. So I like to use the analogy of a road or a highway as the internet. Um, so when we drive our cars down the road, um, the road's job is to get us from point A to point B, where our car is using that road. So in web development, it's sort of the same concept. We've got this highway, this road, um, called the internet, and using a protocol called HTTP, which is the Hypertext Transfer Protocol, we can get our data from the server to the client using HTML. So HTML is what we write, uh, and that's the payload that's going to go on that highway to get from the server to the client side. And the client is our browser. And the server side is something like Apache or Microsoft Internet Information Services. Lots of different web servers out there. Um, probably Apache is the most common. And then, of course, we have the browsers, which are things like Chrome and Safari and Firefox and whatnot, uh, which display our web pages from that HTML code. The Internet in our textbook is described as an Internet-connected network of networks. That's a pretty good definition. Um, and they talk a little bit about Internets, Intranets, and Extranets. Uh, internet being what you and I are used to when we go to Amazon.com, that would be the Internet. Um, and then the book also talks about the history of the Internet, uh, going back to the 1960s, uh, DARPA, which was part of the Department of Defense, came up with this idea of creating a network, um, an internetwork of computers that, uh, that you would have many different paths to get from one computer to the next. So if any one link was uh, detached at any time, you could still get to computers across the country by following a different path. And this was a groundbreaking concept back in, in the 1960s and 70s. It turned out they were, had a pretty good idea. It worked very well. Uh, later it became ARPANET, and it expanded out to uh, academic institutions and universities and, and, uh, and other uh, major companies like IBM and whatnot uh, would start going online with the internet uh, eventually. Uh, in 1991, so up until that time, the internet, you know, was things like email, and and you know, you could get on the internet for things like FTP for moving files. But um, but Tim Berners-Lee changed all that in 1991. I think he really brought the internet into the mainstream with this idea of hyperlinking. So his his idea was that you could create a web of documents that when you click on, and so this plays well into the concept of internet right because we have all these links across the country that any one link can be disconnected and you still have these other paths well likewise with the World Wide Web that Tim Berners-Lee envisioned you would have hyperlinks in documents that could link to other documents that maybe have nothing to do with that document so you can link to other documents and then those documents link to other documents and before you know it you've you've got something like that traveling salesman problem where you know you can have infinite number of paths through all these documents and think about it, when we use the World Wide Web, you go to Amazon.com uh, or you go to Wikipedia.com, you click a link to go to uh, something about heart disease and then that links to something on the National Institutes of Health and then that links back to the American Cancer Institute and so forth and you just go down these rabbit holes of links uh, and eventually they all end up in cat videos. But the concept is you follow these links uh, through the internet. So we have a couple standards organizations we have to worry about. One is the IETF, which is the Internet Engineering Task Force, and ICANN, which is part of IANA, which assigns internet names and numbers, things like your IP address, your host name, uh, your domain name. Uh, that's all handled by ICANN and IANA. We really won't talk about those two through the rest of the semester, but we will talk a lot about W3C, which is the World Wide Web Consortium. And they're the ones that administer uh, the standards for things like HTML, XHTML, XML, CSS, JavaScript, uh, a lot of the things that we're going to be learning this semester. Uh, 